I went to the store today and I bought some screws and some bolts. I mean, some, ugh. So, okay. Uh, I don't have them on the floor. I bought some screws and some nuts. And I'm going to use these to repair the Lakewood 1200DX. When I was at the store, I looked for a new uh, cylinder fan remote control because I still can't find the uh, one that I had. And the remote control cost uh, 39 beans and like 48 cents or something. So I says, forget that. Forget that. I will uh, just build a capacitor box or something to control it with because that's that's ridiculous. That's too expensive. Um, there's a few places I could look upstairs for that remote. It's possible that it's still upstairs. I would have thought I'd brought it down by now, but uh, maybe not. So I did that, and then I also looked for tape when I was at the store because that was one of the things on my list, and the tape was like five beans a roll. Uh, that seemed awfully steep to me, so I may have to look on the computer and see if uh, that's a decent price or not. I don't think it is. But it's, it's been a while since I bought tape, so maybe I just don't remember. Um, and this was in the bedroom. I don't know where that came from. This is unopened. It's probably still good. I don't know if it's got a date on here or not. It's not a door cell, so I'm not too worried about it. <sighs> I, don't see, I don't see a date on here. Oh, anyways. There's that. I see most battery. Okay. So, what I wanted to do in, in the previous video, and I just ran out of time, was I wanted to try to clean up over here a little bit. Because this is kind of, it's like a dump. And it's not functioning as well as it should be. So we have, we have some bone cords here. These are, uh, these are like PBX cords. I think these are six, six pin. But there's only two contacts. Uh, what what the deal is with those? Uh, oh, for heaven's sakes! Oh, uh, there it is. The stinking remote. This is one reason why you can't live like this, because you can't find anything. Here's the stinking remote. Well, I mean, it's great that I found it, but all those hours I spent looking for that thing, and there it was, sitting in plain sight, all because I didn't clean this up. Okay, well, now I'm really going to get this cleaned up. So we have here a dull projector remote. That goes with the projector upstairs. I don't really use the remote because the projector is well within reach. But perhaps someday I will need that remote. Okay. I made that label and I don't know why I didn't put it on the fan, so now that's missing. I have these two modules here and these need to be uh, autopsied to figure out what went wrong. Or perhaps that they can be repaired. I believe what was happening with these is you'd press the on key and it would turn on but then go right back off and these are three pin appliance modules which are kind of hard to find and they're rather expensive to buy so I would like to get those repaired if I can that's the cord for the power bar uh, sandpaper I like to keep around put it down here grounding cheater that has a place to go Search protector that has a place to go. Oh, the phone cord. Oh, the phone cord. There's so many phone cords, it's ridiculous. Here's a little bay egg. Uh, those are always good to have. Doesn't need to be there. 
Um, I think I have another one of those in the other room. Yeah, I do. I've got uh, two of them like that. the rest of those bags up there. Not that that's really a good place for them either, but it'll work for now. See what else we got in here. We have uh, an AT&T trimline telephone, which I cannot get open, and I'm certainly get very agitated by this because I think this would be a very simple repair if you could open it up, but I can't open it up. And I thought maybe that was a like there was a screw under there or something, but I haven't been able to get that off. So I don't know what the deal is with that phone. I may just give up on that, it's not worth the time. This is some video material. These are cold cathode night lights. Gotta get videos on those. That's probably why I left them over here, because I got the videos. Um, this is some more video material. This is an old Radio Shack wireless remote switch. This was in my aunt and uncle's house. He had it on a lamp that was upstairs. Why it's all yellow because it's hot up in the attic here. Uh, we have some switch parts. I gotta fix that. Pan parts. Solar pan parts. Put all that down there for now. Okay, I'm going to do a video on this so that I can go back there. What else have we got here? I'm going to use this for a video, so we'll keep this over here for now. This, uh, I thought was kind of intriguing. I'm going to cut this off because this burnt out and I'm going to keep this base. And maybe I'll use that for something that's kind of cool. Some batteries here. These are from 2009, so although they probably still work to some degree, it's not really worth the space here in the studio. Testing battery. Sun Smart Digitan Timer. I don't even think I have this. I think this manual came in with something else. Pretty sure I don't even have that piece of equipment. These batteries are shot, but I'm going to keep them until I can order replacements. So I have the numbers. That's the testing battery. Right. It's not exactly clean, but it's cleaner than it was. And at least I can see what was under there. That remote should go upstairs. Put that back there and maybe I'll try again with that another day. These batteries, I think we're just gonna discard them. And what is this? Oh five, oh nine, it's almost oh, it's over ten years old. It's the nickel cadmium, so it probably could still work, but I'm not going to use that when I have 
newer batteries that I know are reliable. This doesn't make any sense. So that's that. Um, let's see here. This I'm going to use for a video. I have another broken fan blade we can put on there. <laughs> let's see what happens. This is like my shelf of things to do video on. This. I have these vintage ever ready classic batteries, 9 volts. Notice they don't leak. They haven't leaked anyways, and probably won't anytime soon because they're not Duracell junk. Um, junk words. This is spoiled. I guess I'll do a video on that. Open that up and see what went wrong if, if anything is obvious. This has been intermittently bright and dim. I mean, it's just whatever. That's the charger for that. That box is empty. Uh, order form. Yeah. Um, LED. Ooh, LED. That's that has a place. Put this in there for now. This has a place. This I don't have a place for, but I could foresee using this, so I'll put it over here. Okay. And this is the cord I was going to put on that light, but then I discovered it needs to be grounded. It doesn't need to be, but it was. So I didn't end up using that. But that is still very useful. So we'll put that up here. And we'll save that for maybe some other project. Uh, I'm often finding things that don't have cords. Or, I mean, you could even just make an extension out of it or something. You know, whatever. It could serve a lot of purposes. I think it's uh, 18. 17, no, it's 17 too, which is surprisingly low, because that wasn't a 12 amp vacuum. I would not put 12 amps through a 17 2 cord, but whatever. Thing never caught on fire, so I guess it wasn't that bad. Uh, this, I don't remember where this goes. I usually keep one of these over there to hold the studio thing up, but I don't know what this thing is. Some cord, whatever thing. These are for a video. My grandmother gave me this. It's a hose thing. I thought it was metal, so it's okay. I'll take that. But it's the plastic. I can't imagine it's not going to break in a year or two, but whatever. We'll see what happens. That's the junk. Um, kind of interested to open that up and see why that failed. This is a computer screw. I should put that back with the pile of computers. Elsewhere. These are 100 watts. The problem is the uh, the box is all gross on the bottom. So I may have to take these out and just put them in. You know what I'll probably do is I'll take them out of the box and I'll put them in there when I move that over to the other location. That will be uh, next week's project. Um, so are there any more phone cords in this mess? This is video material. I want to do a video of that. My 
have any purchase documentation out here because it's got people's names and stuff on it. Okay, we got a phone cord here. Got some chunky fan part. And a phone cord. I must have hundreds of those things by now. This fountain. Uh, that should go upstairs because if I do end up using it, that's where I'll use it. Uh, let's see here. We got some hooks, some connectors, I'll put these uh, up here for now. It's an electrical thing, there's a place for that. There's a place for that. Another phone cord. Another phone cord. And this box can go somewhere else. These should go somewhere else. Or I may just repurpose them. I don't really have a use for them because these were custom made for a particular window that I don't have. They're also kind of a little bit crummy on that side. Now, I'll put them over here. Ouch. Get on this tripod. almost done with cooling season. I don't think I'll be using these anymore this year. Although, I may, get, I may do a few units in the fall. We'll see. We'll see how things pan out. A lot of unknowns in the air right now. Okay, that's a good boy. That's a broken blade. Uh, let's see here. We have this. It's kind of an unusual extension cord. This was included with the um, what was this? this came with so it was uh, that awful sale uh, with the completely demolished St. Clair and carriage house. I suppose if you had like a hugger cell fan, you could spray paint this white again and use it. It's semi broken, but when it's up on the ceiling, it wouldn't matter. Got some battery boxes here. Thermostat. A bag. Okay, everything else here is generally fine to stay here. Just keep this here for now.
Okay, so let's see here. Let's put away this stuff. This electrical stuff. I need a box for this stuff here. Pretty much the full, so let's see. I can really fit anything else in here, I'm not sure. Maybe. Okay, I think I'm going to be able to fit everything in here. I'm a little bit surprised, but that's good. I'll break everything before I get it in there. Okay, that's good. That does fit. That's not gonna I'll put it this way instead. Okay, so all the power adapters fit in there and we get the extension cord box out. going to do with this for now. Just going to put it over here. Good enough. And speaking of things that don't fit, the phone cords box is also extremely full and I don't know if I'm going to be able to fit phone cords into it or not. This is the phone cords box. And this must have, I don't know, 300 phone cords or more in here. Probably even more. It's just, it's full. No beating around the bush with this one. It's absolutely full. But I'm going to try and jam these other cords in here anyways. Because I don't really have anywhere else allocated to put them. Cores that are this short, I don't usually put in here. I have a separate box for cords of this length. So we'll keep those out. Pretty sure that's all sticky, so I'm just going to leave that in the box or in the bed. cords are in the box, it's not really closing, but I'm not surprised. Before I put that away, get this other box out, which is where the 
shorter phone cords go. And other miscellaneous phone equipment. Bunch of ends in here. A couple new in the box cords. Alright, that's it for the phone cords. Oh, this was that fireball charger. Okay, so that's that. I guess we could do another video with that blade. Got a wire tie here. And uh, I'm gonna take this off of here. This is a pretty good uh, pipe cleaner. It's got like uh, metal bristles along the ends of it. Certainly wouldn't use that as a wire tie. That seems like it's very dangerous. Huh. I'm not even going to put it in there because that's not what it's for. I'll just hang it on the bench for now. There. Okay. So, uh, you can look at some things that came in. And then, uh, I think that'll be it for this video. Because it's, uh, getting late and I'm the tired. So, we have a couple things came in. We have a unit and telephone. It's got the original battery in here from 1996. It probably still works. It's the model BT-185. And this is the telephone model XC714. And uh, I have a particular nostalgia to this handset because the first cordless phone I had was uh, pretty much the same handset with an answering machine. And this one's in pretty good condition other than the yellowing. It's very clean and, um, and there's some couple of minor scrapes here and there but it's like it probably fell once outside or something but it's in pretty decent condition. Ah, there's another phone cord. Um, Let's see here, the model number, we were talking about the model number, it made in the Philippine, Philippines. And the antenna is the broken, I wrote to the seller and I said pack it very carefully because these antennas do break. And I think, I don't remember if it was broken originally or not. To their credit, they did pack it pretty substantially, they didn't do it correctly you know, to really protect the antenna, but they did, they tried, and so I'm not upset with them. Um, it's just an unfortunate situation that transpired there. Um, so there's that. Here's the power cord that came with it. This is the unit and power cord, AC adapter model, AD dash, looks like eight, six or 800, maybe 600, I can't tell. Yeah, it's 600, and it outputs the 9 volts at only 100 milliamps. I'm not sure this is the original adapter, so it looks kind of weird. 
what does this call for? It does not say. It says 9 volts. It doesn't specify the um, input voltage, though. I mean, the uh, milliamps. The Uniden used to offer a lengthy history of manuals on their website and um, I was able to go and download the website uh, from the from an archive website and so I have a fairly extensive list of manuals on hand I'm not sure if it's a complete listing of all the different models they offered but probably be able to download the manual for that telephone still And this is how I keep track of the power cords. I make the label, throw a hole at it, and I take a wire tie and I'll just wrap the wire up and include the label with the wire. sorting it, you know, it just ends up in one box and everything's a mess, it takes forever to find anything, but for now that's that's what it is. Uh, two of the boxes here. I think I know what this one is, I'm not sure what this is. I think that's a, a piece of software. Bag is reusable and designed for at least 125 uses. Wash the inside of the bag using soapy water. Okay, that does feel pretty sturdy. This is a throwback. I remember these when I was in high school. Those were very popular. A lot of people had those. I had a few of them. So. Okay, last box for tonight. Here we go with the tape again. You know, if tape is really $5 a roll, then why the heck do people do this? I mean, there's so many layers of tape on here, I can't even cut through it. And these, these bags, like, they seal by themselves. This isn't even necessary. Scissors are fantastic. This is a copy of Microsoft Plus for Windows XP. Um, I'm not sure if that thing on the top is a license code or not. But anyways, this is, is something for Windows XP that adds a whole bunch of additional features and programs to it. So I could add some screen savers. I think the Mac used to have a screensaver like that, or at least one was available. I always remember my grandfather had that on his computer. 
you know, kind of flamey and goof thing that is. Um, anyway, so this is interesting. I didn't even know this existed until very recently. That letter told me about this. And uh, since I'm very fond of Windows XP, I had to have it. It was really cheap. It was only like 10 or $15. So I got that, and I'll install that on video and see what that does. It's another uh, example of how Windows has become a lot less interesting over the years. As far as I know it, there's nothing like this for Windows 10. It just kind of is whatever it is. So uh, that's that. Uh, oh, there's some system requirements on here. 750 megahertz processor or higher. 128 megabytes of RAM. So it actually has kind of high specifications for the time. You wouldn't be able to put this on any old computer. At least 16 gigabytes of memory on a 3D graphics card. 300 megabytes of drive space. That was a lot of space back in the day. Hmm. Alright, well I'm tired. I gotta go to sleep. That's gonna conclude this video. Over and out.